everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry and more so today's topic in oral surgery is management of anaphylactic shock so anaphylaxis is nothing but a manifestation of immediate hypersensitivity so it is a type 1 hypersensitivity that is an allergic reaction so in which exposure of a sensitized individual to a specific antigen results in a life threatening respiratory distress okay so it will result in life threatening respiratory distress so this hypersensitivity we learned in our second year of uh, dentistry uh, in microbiology where we learn type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 uh, hypersensitivity reaction so this is the most uh, dangerous one so it is usually followed by a vascular collapse and shock accompanied by pruritis urticaria and angioedema so there will be pruritis Urticaria and angio edema. Whereas uh, the pruritus is nothing but an uncomfortable, irritating sensation that creates an urge to scratch that can involve any part of the body. Whereas urticaria means a skin rash uh, triggered by a reaction to food medicine or other irritants and angioedema is a painless swelling under the skin triggered by allergy to uh, pollen drugs venom food or medication so these are the most common symptoms of hypersensitivity so what are the causes of anaphylaxis so the most common causes are medications including antibiotics especially penicillin and sulfur drugs so causes one can be medication mainly penicillin and sulfur drugs then it can be vaccines opiates aspirin NSAIDs local anesthetics IV fluids uh, insulin so anything can be a cause for anaphylactic shock so any medication should be test dose done before the application to avoid this serious uh, anaphylactic shock which is a respiratory distress which is a life threatening one so that is medication and also there can be uh, food such as milk egg the wheat seafood seafood is a very common allergen which creates anaphylactic shock so it varies from person to person so one person all of these uh, will not create any problem but maybe the second person one of the product might cause allergic reaction so uh, we cannot uh, say that which causes which person so it varies from uh, person to person so it depends upon the person's immunity and person's reaction to the allergen and also this is related to food also we have the stings by fire ants and the bees wasp and yellow jackets all stings can also result in anaphylactic shock and the blood products blood products including plasma immunoglobulin cryoprecipitate and whole blood can also result in anaphylactic shock idiopathic causes are also there so physiology of anaphylactic shock is it occurs only in those people who have previously been exposed to allergen the person is already exposed so the second time is uh, the anaphylactic shock is happening so the patient who is exposed to allergen there will be an incubation period so this is a patient so this is the first time this time the patient exposed to the allergen nothing happened okay 
then there will be an incubation period. So the first time there is no symptoms and after this there will be production of antibodies. So antibodies will be produced because there is an allergen here. So any allergen there will be antibodies production in the body. So when the patient is exposed to the same allergen for the second time okay so the second time it will result in anaphylactic shock so sometimes it is uh, called as shock dose shock dose because the same allergen on a second time is creating anaphylactic shock so the most common signs and symptoms we already discussed that is pruritus urticaria and angioedema so the signs and symptoms are most commonly seen in the skin gastrointestinal respiratory or circulatory system okay so these signs and symptoms are not too dangerous but they do have the potential to become life threatening if they are located in some specific areas such as if angioedema around the mouth or throat could cause death because of the airway obstruction so mostly it is becoming life threatening when this angioedema is causing airway obstruction if it is creating edema on the air passage there will be airway obstruction and patient is having chance to die so gastrointestinal symptoms include nausea vomiting diarrhea the respiratory are sneezing cough weakness tightness in chest bronchospasm uh, varying degrees of airway obstruction because airway obstruction is very common patient is uh, having agonal breathing patient is trying very hard to breathe most often due to this laryngeal edema a swelling of the larynx that occurs as a result of aller allergic reaction and the swelling may be great enough to cause partial or complete obstruction of the airway so the most common cause of death in anaphylactic reaction is the airway obstruction so the circulatory symptoms include uh, hypotension shock cardiac arrhythmia and circulatory collapse also there will be syncope tachycardia and palpitations so diagnosis is very important we need to diagnose it as early as possible so diagnosis would be relatively very easy uh, seeing the signs and symptoms uh, which occurs immediately after exposure sometimes the patient eats a uh, seafood and starts uh, expressing these signs and symptoms so one has to notify it as early as possible and get the treatment done so in that situation almost immediately the patient would feel faint and weak would begin sweating and will become anxious and restless so then patient develops severe itching sensation as a result of this allergy then it proceeds through the gastrointestinal respiratory and circulatory stages so if the cycle is not stopped the end result would be death so how do we treat this so the first thing is seeing the signs and symptoms we should make sure that it is an anaphylactic shock then summon medical assistance place the patient in supine position patient should be in supine position then we should administer oxygen okay and we need to administer epinephrine this is the life saving drug of anaphylactic patients epinephrine that is dosage 0.3 to 0.5 milligram initial dose it can be intramuscular injection or 0.1 mg iv intravenously can be given so these doses should be repeated as necessary until the resolution of the event then we can also uh, give antihistamines as needed then we can start initiate cpr risk cardiopulmonary resuscitation and in worst cases we can perform 
Kriko Thyrotomy. So that is the sequence. So pine position, oxygen, epinephrine, antihistamine, CPR, and Kriko Thyrotomy. So that is uh, how we deal a patient uh, of anaphylactic shock. So we discussed uh, what is anaphylactic shock, what are the causes and how do we treat this and what are the signs and symptoms. So hope you understood this small concept of anaphylactic shock. It is, uh, it is asked few times how to manage uh, the anaphylactic shock. So it is an allergic reaction. So I'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery. Thank you.